The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Monday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got markets starting things off in positive territory. We get the S&Ps up about 16 points right now. That's about a third of a percent, trading at 46.94. NASDAQ 100 up about 68 points, 16,261. The Dow right now up 135. 36,149, and we get the Russell up 14 points. That's more than half a percent right now at 24.24. Bitcoin up about 1,200 bucks right now. We make a low on Friday of Bitcoin, 62,385. Over the weekend, we're up about 1,200 bucks. We were just above 66,000 at about 4 a.m. this morning. Bitcoin trading at 65.5. You got crude. Under 80 bucks, 79.66, grew down a buck 13. We got gold off $3 right now. Pretty tame action in that gold contract. We spike up to 18.73. We're trading at 18.65 right now. Silver is down 22 pennies at 25.12. And we jump over to the all important note and bond market. A little bit of a pullback in the last few minutes or so. You see that pullback. We're down about seven ticks from where we were at about 8.30 this morning. But right now, you're basically flat from Friday's close. We're positive by one tick in the 10-year right now. You're talking about a yield of 1.58% on the 10-year, 1.58% on that 10-year. We jump over to the volatility index. We had a little bit of elevated action last week, made it to 1990 on Wednesday's acceleration to lower prices in the market. We clawed back some of those losses. We ended last week at 1615. We kick off trading at 1671 for the volatility index, pretty close to the historical average of where that VIX usually falls. All right, let's just kick right into it. We got stocks already moving this morning. We got a big week of retail earnings coming up. Should be interesting to see how they that shakes out. We got Walmart, we got Target this week, among others. Uh, and uh, we'll kick it off with Oatly. The oat milk producer lost seven cents per share. The market was looking for 10 cents per share. Revenue came in below forecast. However, you can talk about some moves. 14 point cent. 14.1%. It was down, and what are they talking about, folks? I bring it up first in the show because it's a common theme. Challenges related to various COVID-related restrictions continues to scale up production. They're just talking about supply woes, COVID restrictions. O-T-L-Y is their symbol. O-T-L-Y. There's a drop-off for you from 1182 to 975. You're down more than two bucks. The conference call just beginning and the pain continuing on that equity down to 975. We take a look at this thing. Talk about getting a little bit of ahead of itself on its IPO price, trading up to 29. We're going to open in the single digits, folks, single digits for this equity. And what are we talking about for a market cap right now? We're talking about a market cap uh, coming into that, I believe, of $5.8 billion. Pretty remarkable. They pushed this out to the public, got it up to a valuation of, what's that, $16 billion, something like that. Uh, not so fast uh, in that market. There's just a lot of competitors in that market. I love almond milk. Uh, don't drink much milk myself anymore do have a little bit of cream sometimes in my coffee but beyond that dairy in general not really great so i'm a big believer in almond milk and and the likes of that uh i do love cheese though so still everything in moderation uh point being though 16 billion dollar valuation you got to sell a lot of oat milk at 16 billion dollar valuation for that company uh looks to be a little bit of a pullback to say the least on their earnings tesla all right, right, let's. we're going to wait to get into Tesla. Mr. Elon Musk uh, having himself quite a weekend yet again. He looks to be potentially selling more Tesla stock. He's trying to blame it on the Democrats and Bernie Sanders. Uh, I wouldn't be buying that, folks, in any second. Uh, we'll jump to that in a moment. Dollar Tree, though, they are trading higher uh, as you have an activist taking a stake in there. The Journal reporting that uh, Mantle Ridge, that's an uh, activist inventor, investor, Wants Dollar Tree to take action to boost its stock price, focusing on pricing strategies of the company's family dollar chain. Pricing strategies. What does that mean, folks? That means jacking up the prices, I imagine, at the dollar stores. Uh, the news prompted Deutsch to upgrade the stock, DLTR. 
Maybe they'll be called the $2 store from now on. And check out this pop, folks. Now we go back to the high we had in April. I was looking at this this morning, right? We're trading on Friday at 130.13. This does not have the pre-market action, folks. We're going to open at 122. We're going to open at a high for the year. And we back this up. You're talking about above the levels that we were at in October, too. Look at this double top. And we're going to open above that level. We got a bid ask above 121.50 right now, more than a dollar above the, low, the highs we had this year, more than a dollar above the highs we had in October. Let's back this up even further. Yeah, there you go. We're going to talk about open at all time highs. You back it up to where we were in the beginning of 2018. You're as high as about 116 and change now for the short term action, the 15 minute this morning. There's your acceleration from Friday to Sunday. We make it up to 123. We're opening uh, above to 121 for Dollar Tree, liking the action of up in the prices for their products. Tyson, they are in 230 a share. 20 cents a share above estimates, 27. Revenue top forecast as well. New productivity program. Save $1 billion. TSN is their symbol. TSN. Uh, pretty tame action on their earnings so far. A little bit down now. Beyond Meat last week, right? Quite the fall off on Wednesday on their earnings. They claw back some of that. Uh, I talked about when we went over Beyond Meat. Tyson, I mean, all these companies are going to be on the fake, be in the fake beat. Be in the fake beef business. Say that one five times fast at some point. Uh, Tyson opening pretty marginal action, down about 40 to 60 cents on their earnings so far this morning. John Deere, they've been battling with their workers trying to get an agreement. Uh, reached a third tentative contract agreement after the first two were rejected. Neither side gave details on the new agreement. Not yet clear when the vote will take place. Workers have been off the job for over a month, folks. D.E. Whoops. Is there a symbol? Little bit of volatility to the upside on that potential good news. We back this up for the full context of their volatility. Uh, they go on that strike. Where was it? October 14th or so. There you see, kind of correlating to the lows. There you go, about 320. Interesting when you look, this thing is up to 360. You're talking about more than a 10% move since workers have been on strike, right? Interesting. And those workers, they rejected uh, quite a pay raise on the last one. Maybe rightfully so with everything going on, um, but they're holding out for some big numbers there. And looks like maybe they got a third agreement. We'll see if that goes forward. Uh, Boeing. Let's see. So uh, you have their senior vice president talking about getting close to resuming deliveries of the 787 Dreamliner after suspending them to deal with production issues. I believe we got a big show going on in Dubai or something like that, right? The airline show going on, uh, the air aircraft show i'll pull that one up in particular but yeah look at boeing getting a little bit of a pop up to 228 from 220 there's your 15 minute chart on that acceleration now boeing i've been watching this thing for a while we had quite an uptrend channel here uh if you're looking to get in boeing okay check this out this is a weekly chart we go back to the covid lows of 89 bucks right you correlate to the low we had in october we got the highs matching up as well now we traded below this line I would look, and you're going to bump up against this potentially today. About 232 gets you back within that channel line there. Uh, look for it to get back within it. Maybe you test that channel line. Might be an opportunity for Boeing. We'll see as travel potentially picking back up, airlines picking back up. Let's check out some of those travel stocks because we had quite a pullback on Friday in some of these equities. Uh, Delta up marginally this morning. We'll check out United. Pretty same action. All these pulling back pretty harshly. Carnival right now. Uh, up partially, we have Norwegian. Norwegian, we have in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. Um, got in there at a good price. Now you're checking about Norwegian. Similar action here. You got a trend line coming off the COVID lows of seven bucks, ticking across that bottom portion of that trend line. Want to see it hold Norwegian right now, open and flat. Stay tuned, folks. When we come back, we'll be talking a little bit of Tesla. Mr. Elon Musk, we'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up.
Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. Let's take a look at Tesla. We pull up Tesla shares this morning. Tesla trading down about 12, 13 bucks. We see the action last week. We put it on a 15 minute chart. Uh, news over last weekend. We're going back six, seven, eight days right now. Uh, of course, with Tesla, Elon Musk polling Twitter whether he should sell 10% of his position. Uh, Monday, pretty calm action. Tuesday, the market kind of wakes up to the fact that, hold on, this is a real deal. Elon might be selling a decent portion of a position. He sure was. The news came out on last Tuesday that his brother was actually selling a decent portion of position as well. The day before, Elon came out and pulled Twitter. Folks, if you think he's not playing games here, okay, then then we're in a disagreement. And that's all you got to say. Even on Monday's action, he's ex exercising stocks, uh, options that he has. If he pushes the share price down for just a short period of time, that's going to decrease his tax bill. Maybe it pops back up afterwards, okay? But what I'm going to get into over the weekend is that uh, he is out there as well. So in a little bit of a feud with Mr. Bernie Sanders, um, and Bernie, the proud socialist out there, uh, we must demand that extremely wealthy pay their fair share, period. Uh, Elon trolling him. And then what he says is, want me to sell more stock, Bernie? Just say the word. Listen, there's nothing to do with the Democrats that's causing Elon Musk to sell his shares. He is quite the genius in PR here, um, spinning this in that way. He's selling billions and billions of dollars of his shares, uh, and he's trying to act like that's not his decision at all. And if you think that, then, again, we just disagree. I'll be respectful. But in no way would I imagine that that is the case, folks. And the other side of this is, and listen, I am not a, I'm not a socialist, that's for sure. All right, I'm a capitalist, one million percent. Um, but I think a lot of people w would agree that the uber wealthy of this country actually don't pay their fair share. All right, many, whether it's Bezos, whether it's Elon, the upper echelons, you're talking about the, you know, 0.01% richest of the rich, uh, they don't pay anywhere near the percentages that the normal people of society making 50 grand to 100 grand a year do. That's just a fact, folks. They don't do it. The laws are written in a way that allows them to shield that income. They don't pay it until it's sold. Um, so the, the sentiment alone that those people should pay more, I think, is something that a lot of people can get behind. The problem is how we make that happen. 
All right, unrealized gains, probably not a good idea. Many people not on board, doesn't look like that's gonna happen. That's probably a good thing. Um, but just the general idea that they should, seems like that should be a general idea that, that a lot of people would get behind. Uh, and meanwhile, you got Mr. Elon Musk. Now, what's interesting is here, you got the big shorts, Michael Burry. Burry? He, Burry. He's out there kind of agreeing with my take on things. And I was talking about it last week, folks, okay? Uh, his quote, uh, and he is of the fame, the big short, okay? He doesn't need the cash. He just wants to sell Tesla, Tesla uh, he says. Uh, and this is the interesting part I wanted to bring it up. Now, his Twitter profile is under the name Cassandra. Not familiar with why. I think I heard that at one point, but this is his Twitter account. Uh, let's face it, Elon Musk borrowed against 88.3 million shares, sold all of his mansions, moved to Texas, and is asking Bernie Sanders whether he should sell more stock. He doesn't need cash. He just wants to sell Tesla. Now, what's interesting is he puts up a chart here, okay, of Tesla shares. A little bit parabolic, maybe, folks. Maybe a little bit parabolic. Uh, now Tesla is split adjusted. All right, we'll have to get let's get the let's get the Tesla split here history while we talk about this because I confused Tesla and Apple because they split in a similar time. Uh, five for one. So Tesla split five for one, which is crazy because it's trading at a thousand bucks. Remember, they'd be trading at five thousand dollars at one point. Remember when Elon says he was going to take a private at four twenty, and the world laughed him off, and he almost got kicked out of being the chairman of the company because of that. Well, folks, it's now trading at 5,000. He talked about taking a private at 420 and everyone laughed him off. He talked about that funding was secured. That was the thing that got him in trouble in that tweet, if you remember, right? I think he said funding secured, uh, private at 420, something like that. And the one that he did, now this is, and it's tough to see on this chart. Maybe I'm going to zoom it in. Nah, I really can't a little bit. But when Tesla was trading at split adjusted, like 175 or so in here, and that's uh, in the middle of 2020 somewhere, maybe in the little bit like April, May, somewhere in that in 2020. Elon put out that Tesla was too high. And he said, literally, not kidding. The stock price is too high. He was trying to get a little bit ahead, I think, uh, of, of the share price getting too high. Um, and he loves the pot jokes. So that, that was all in there. Um, but keep in mind that that was his sentiment when Tesla was trading at under 200. It was trading at 1200 when he's out there blaming, blaming tax laws for selling. And his brother was selling at the same time. He's a brilliant man, folks. Pay attention to it because it might mean the selling is not over. Now, you want really the, the, the super bear case in Tesla? The super bear case is Elon has done what he set out to do in Tesla. He's done it. The company has taken over the, electro, the electric vehicle segment. He's changed the world. He pushed electric vehicles to the forefront. All the other car companies now have to compete. They're all going to have fleets of electric vehicles in the next five to 10 years. Uh, he's done what he set out to achieve. Tesla is there for good. They're not going away. Maybe he begins to step away from that company. Maybe he begins to diversify. Maybe he begins to spend his $200 billion on other ventures. And if he does that, he's going to need to liquidate some of that position. It's totally feasible, folks. I don't imagine it's going to happen. I'm pulling it a little bit out of blue, um, thin air, okay? But it's something you should consider because there's nothing to say. He is not your traditional founder in terms of just keeping those shares in Tesla forever, okay? And, and just building a plan where he's going to sell them out and build some kind of nonprofit a la Bill Gates. Like, all right, that is not what Elon's going to do. He could just dump a big portion of a position dump it into SpaceX, maybe start another few companies. Maybe he, he accelerates and creates a competitor to SpaceX. I'm, I'm just thinking of it. This is what Elon can do, though. Um, and, and keep that on your radar. When you got Tesla trading at a trillion dollar valuation, they got a long way to go to make those numbers work, folks. And maybe Elon says, you know what? We're pushing multiples that are just crazy right now. Yeah, we might be able to get there, but I'm going to take a bunch of my money off the table. I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it into a bunch more ventures. And I'm going to step back a little bit from Tesla completely possible because he has he's a visionary and he's gotten that company where it needs to go um, the company now is basically a nuts and bolts operation of process where they need to figure out the process of pushing out hundreds of thousands if not millions of cars right i think they're making about five hundred thousand cars a year now they're going to be ramping that up in a big way so keep that on your radar because uh he's got a lot of malarkey to put it to put it lightly out there on twitter creating a lot of smoke screen for his ability to be selling shares and there's nothing to say folks that that sale just won't keep going in a big way um he's the one founder that i could just see saying you know what i mean he, he started paypal took all that money 
and just sunk it into Tesla and almost went broke because he wanted to start an electric vehicle car. So don't put it past them to do some wild things, as we all know. Tesla share is going to open down another 15 bucks. We'll see how they open today uh, as he continues the sales on Tesla. All right, let's jump around to some of the retail stocks as we await their earnings. We'll pull up the numbers in terms of when they're coming out. Walmart shares up a little bit today, up about 50 cents, waiting for their numbers. Target shares right now up as well, the 262 target, man. Talk about a stock. We're talking about near all-time highs of 267 made back in August. You pulled back to a price of 222, and just like that, we're up almost 20% over the last six weeks in Target shares, pushing near all-time highs as we come into their earnings. When we come back from the break, we'll go over some of the retail companies with their earnings. We'll pull up Walmart, we'll pull up Target, uh, some of the likes, and let's check out how Amazon, speaking of, is trading this morning. Amazon shares opening up about 10, 15 bucks this morning. We're coming into potentially some Black Friday action. The sale's already starting. I was getting the emails this weekend from Walmart. Uh, get those Christmas presents early this year, folks. You heard the rhetoric. Supply shortages might be the vogue statement of the of the season. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We get the markets open. We get the S&Ps up by 10 right now, pulling back a little bit on the open right now. We get the NASDAQ 100 up 29. We get the Dow up 112. We get the Russell up by nine points right now. We jump to commodities. Crude backing off a bit, 79.53. We get the gold contract sitting at 18.65 this morning. We jump to notes and bonds with the market open. A uh, little bit of a pullback in about the last half hour to hour, 8.30 a.m. We were up there at 130.26. Right now, you get the 10-year positive by one tick on the session at one. 3018 and let's jump around to some of the stocks we'll start it off with tesla always interested with the action because folks talk about some volatility tesla shares down 1.6 percent um but keep your eye on that one because you're still talking about a valuation right now of above a trillion i think what are we talking about yes 1.02 trillion dollars for tesla shares of this morning down 1.6 percent all right let's jump around to some of the retail stocks we talked about it we get walmart numbers they are out on tuesday <coughs> excuse me uh, they're talking about Walmart. They're talking about Walmart in the den, uh, partying it up at Walmart on Saturday night, coming into holiday season. Kudos to uh, braving that environment. But yeah, we're going to find out a little bit about Walmart as they come out with their numbers, pulling it up on Tuesday. So we got Walmart on Tuesday, jumping over to the Analyze tab. We'll be talking about a $5.38 move for Walmart priced in to their numbers. Now, that is the move priced in for the earnings. You look for the week. Right, it's basically all their earnings. You got a five dollar and ninety four cent move for the options expiring fi Friday. Five dollars and thirty eight cents of that move priced into the earnings event happening on Tuesday and jumping over for the earnings. There it is, November sixteenth. They'll be out with their numbers tomorrow. Uh, we jump to Tyson Foods. I spoke of. They will be out. Uh, are they out already? Yes, they are out already. Excuse me. That's right. We went over them. Uh, advanced Auto Parts. Are they out already or after the bell tonight? They might be after the bell tonight. Yeah, we get Advanced Auto Parts after the bell tonight. You're looking at a $13 move for a $240 stock for Advanced Auto Parts. The other one on Tuesday. So back to Tuesday. We got Walmart and we get Home Depot. That's going to be a big one tomorrow. Uh, Home Depot. We're opening basically flat. Now, these things have had quite a run, man. Check out the run for Home Depot, right? You back it up to June. We we're at 299. We're trading at 373, let alone where we were just about six weeks ago at 324. We're up to 373. Uh, $13 move. Not too big of a move when you're talking about a $373 stock price for their numbers. Also on Tuesday, we get Lazy Boy, uh, Vodafone, NetEase, we get. Jumping over to Wednesday, uh, the big stocks continue. We get Target. So Walmart on Tuesday, Target on Wednesday, Target $15 move for a $264 stock we'll be talking about. We also get NVIDIA and Cisco. NVIDIA, NVDA, they're out with their numbers on Wednesday. We're talking about an $18 move priced in for a $304 stock. I mean, this is going to be a big week, right? Think about it. You're talking about retail, right? We're talking about chips, NVIDIA, Cisco, Target. We get Lowe's on Wednesday as well. Lowe's and Home Depot. Lowe's, you're talking about almost a 5.5% move priced into their earnings. A $12 move, basically, coming out for their numbers for a $235 stock, as they'll be out with Wednesday. We also get Bath & Body Works. We get Victoria's Secret out on Wednesday. On Thursday, we continue with some retail. We get Macy's. Macy's has been on quite a run recently. We jump over to their chart, man. From $17 bucks back in August, you were up to $32 bucks just in the last 10 days, you're trading at 3122. I mean, my goodness, the run Macy's has had. From the COVID lows of four bucks, you skip across until we get vaccine efficacy numbers in November and you take off to the tune of, look at that run, man, from basically five bucks, six bucks. We're trading at 31 bucks. Let's back this up a little bit further because yeah, you got some more highs up here. You're at 31. I mean, you're talking about highs of 40 bucks that we made back in 2018. Uh, maybe that's where Macy's is heading. We get their numbers coming out on Thursday. We also get AMAT on Thursday as well. So think about it. NVIDIA, Cisco, AMAT, apply, you know, Applied Materials. Uh, what else we got? Palo Alto Networks, Intuit is out. Now, back to, back to uh, some retail raw stores. They'll be out with their numbers. No, that's not raw stores. Is it ROST? There it is, Ross. Uh, they'll be out with their numbers on Thursday as well. We get Workday, William Sonoma, William Sonoma, WSM, is that him? Yeah, William Sonoma, my goodness, from 26 bucks, look at this chart, to 213. Is that, that's an all-time high. Whew, this chart, that is an all-time high as we come into William Sonoma numbers on Thursday as well. 
And Friday, we got Foot Locker to end the week. So it's a big week. I mean, uh, that's almost a whole segment of the program just running over the headline stocks that will be coming out. Now, that's a monthly for Foot Locker. Let's put it back on a three-year weekly. COVID, those are about 17 bucks. We make a high earlier this year of about 65 Quite a pop, though, in the last six weeks or so, from 45 bucks up to 55 We put it back on the daily for Foot Locker. Foot Locker shares up today by about 1.1% on their numbers. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks this morning. Amazon shares. <coughs> Look at this pop, Amazon up 1.2%. I want to jump to Kohl's. When, it, when is Kohl's out? Are they already out with their numbers? Let's see when they come out with their numbers. No, so they're out Thursday as well. Yeah, they're out Thursday as well. And uh, this has had quite a run, but quite a consolidation. When you look, we're basically back to prices we were at for Kohl's back in March. Now, just completely anecdotal, folks. I was out there uh, this weekend taking a look at some kids' products, some, some toys. Uh, Kohl's has got some great deals out there. Bottom line, some great deals. Look, and I think they got, and I have no Kohl's in my account, folks. None. No Kohl's. No bias here at all. And uh, Kohl's, I think they got like a 15% off. We were looking at... Um, some like uh, play kitchens, right? We got a four-year-old in the house, so we're looking at a play kitchen, stuff like that. Some of those like uh, play kitchens that you can have. And they had, let me see, I was, I was looking on their website. So here we go. Because, I mean, this is the stuff, man. They are actually beating, okay? Look at this. They're actually beating, which surprised me, Amazon and Walmart on price, all right? I'll try and even pull it up to see the exact item that I was talking about because, it doesn't make sense to me that a company like Kohl's, I, I said to um, my fiance, I said, how, how are they beating Amazon and Walmart on price on a, on a, you know, a kid's play kitchen that's about 120 bucks? But they are. And look at the, the deals they have here. So right now, I think they had, uh, what are these? These go 20% off. Yeah, 20 15% off. I can't keep track of all the sales they are going. Take a 15% off with promo code SHOP15, right? Uh, take an extra $10 off to your $50 home purchase. I mean, sales everywhere. We know that that's going on. But they had actually beat Amazon and Walmart. So I found myself saying, I can't believe I'm just about to pull up the internet. I'm about to make a purchase. I'm about to do it at Kohl's. And I just price shopped Amazon and Walmart, and they lost to Kohl's. And on top of that, I think I was going to get like 15 Kohl's bucks on top of that, on something like that. Completely anecdotal, folks. Okay? They got a lot going on. There's going to be a lot bigger fish in terms of what's going to come out on earnings, how they're handling their supply chain, how they're handling wages, right? Are they destroying their margins by offering those prices and they're going to have no earnings? Something totally possible. But I just found myself saying I can't believe actually that I'm going on the internet and I'm going to end up purchasing – a uh, hundred dollar plus item toy from Kohl's of all places that they won out the price war versus Amazon and Walmart. Walmart usually gets it done. They do. They're tough to beat on price. Uh, Amazon sometimes not quite the same deal, but Kohl's up 1.7% so far to kick off the week. They'll be out with their numbers on Thursday. We'll take a look at some of those other retail stocks, continue the conversation. We'll be right back, folks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the market sitting in positive territory, pretty close to where we kicked off the session. S&P's up about 10 points right now, trading at 46.87. Russell giving back the gains. Look at that drop off. We're down to 24.11. You're positive by a point in the Russell. Dow up 85 at 36,100. Bitcoin holding above 65,000 right now. You got gold giving off back five bucks, but holding up pretty well considering where we've been recently at 1865 in gold. And uh, we jumped to notes and bonds as we continue a little bit of a slide to lower price and higher yield right now, you're talking about a yield of 1.6%, we'll call it 1.596 to be exact, but we're pushing 1.6% right now on the 10 year, negative by two ticks. You look where we were, we were up at about 130.26. So you're giving up 11 ticks from where we were at five in the morning right now on that 10 year. A lot of the conversation having to do with inflation. Uh, and you had uh, Mr. Mohammed Al Arian out there on CNBC today talking about the Fed losing credibility over its inflation narrative. I'm sure a lot would agree. Uh, his quote, I've argued that it's really important to reestablish a credible voice on inflation, and this has massive institutional, political, and social implications. Um, the, the words coming out of Chairman Powell's mouth and the Fed, talking about transitory, talking about that everything's going to subside, I don't think when those words started, Right when things started creeping up early this year, because think about it, we've had the vaccines now for over a year. Right, the vaccines really started getting rolled out nine months ago to the general public. That thereabouts, that's when things started ramping up. You had the reopening, right? You had all of those influences causing some transitory price increases, as the Fed argued. Well, folks, we're coming into November right now. CNBC, uh, excuse me, CBS. Uh, 60 Minutes had a great segment last night talking about the supply chain woes. They went to some of the ports. They talked about the backlogs. They talked about um, those containers just sitting there. They talked about how that's going to hit things. It was a great, great piece. Uh, if you have the ability to check it out, it was last night, just kind of providing some context to what's going on. Uh, you look at those ports, folks. You look at all of those containers just sitting there that can't move. It's tough to tell how this thing's going to normalize anytime soon. And I would agree that it's going to get harder and harder for the Fed chair to keep talking about the term transitory when even himself is previously saying he expects inflation conditions to persist well into next year and can see that it's frustrating that supply chain issues are showing no signs of improvement. The term transitory is not two years. That's not how he was spinning that in the beginning, folks. Um, and I don't think that that's going to play. I mean, the fear here is you're seeing some Fed, some previous Fed chairs, all right, some very, very smart people out there already saying 
the Fed is probably very worried right now, okay, and that they may have to get ahead of what's coming here in terms of inflation starts really running. I mean, be careful in terms of where these rates could be, and that could shock the market, folks, if we get a real rise real quick uh, ahead of where we thought. Now, we have the tapering going on, right, that was just announced, but there's nothing to say that they can't ramp up that tapering faster than they anticipated, and that would allow rate increases to come before we anticipate beyond that. Because right now you're talking about $15 billion a month, the Fed's gonna taper. It's gonna take them about eight months to taper the 120 billion. So we go eight months out from here, you're talking about maybe June of next year before they could ha start ri raising rates. Well, that is always up for debate, folks. Even the chair said that himself, and we're seeing it continue. You get the tenure down three ticks right now. Uh, we're at 1.6%. You take a look at this thing on a daily, uh, quite the drop, folks, from where we were in August of this year. We were at 135.16. That's when everybody um, was saying, you know, where are rates going? We going lower? No, we're not going lower, folks. Um, we have dropped dramatically. You have the rates back at 1.6% volatility everywhere in this market. It's just a, a possibility you should be pricing in because the, the possibility that we get rates rising a lot faster than we might have thought even a month or two ago is very real when you get the type of CPI prints that you're getting on a monthly basis. And it looks like none of this is subsiding. I mean, Dollar Tree today is up dramatically because you have an activist investor saying, Jack, your price is up, people. It's up 11 percent. You're at 125.40. Of course you are. All right, you can't operate in that type of an environment where you're paying higher wages, you have supply issues. Um, jack up those prices. Dollar Tree up 10.6%, and I believe that's an all-time high. There you go, above all those highs I talked about earlier, Dollar Tree up 10.6% today, big numbers. All right, what else we got going on, folks? We got a big week at TFNN, it's perfect. We got our man Larry Pesavento with all the volatility. We got big week, week of retail earnings out there. I went over it. Two days from right now, folks, 48 hours. Larry Pesavento, he's got a live trading webinar, 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern time, all right? Uh, the reason why it's 9 till 2 is Larry doesn't really do much trading for the final two hours of the trading day. So there's no sense in sitting in there when all the trading is done. He loves the morning sessions, 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, $295 is the cost. You get a free month of his newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7. That's a $97 value right away. So that brings down the cost to somewhere around 200 bucks. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and that will be archived, folks. And we got a bunch of good people already signed up. We Larry's given access to people who paid for his last webinar in August. So they'll be able to attend. There'll be a good group of traders in the room bouncing questions off of Larry. And it's not just live trading, folks. He's going to be walking through his methodology uh, that he trades with, talking about ABCs, ABCDs, as he puts it. Uh, if you click on the front page, you can see a full gambit of what he's talking about, folks, in terms of trend change patterns that give you early entry into the trend, uh, how to use ABCDs to generate direct market feedback and build expectations, combining four simple tools to help you find an edge, uh, the three patterns to help identify shifts in supply and demand. All of this will be talked about five hours. That's going to be Wednesday, folks. We get some volatility in the markets. It should be a great day. I encourage you to check it out. $295. And again, that is archived. So that's on your members page for as long as you like. It's a five-hour session. You can go back and check out what Larry was trading, his charts, all of that saved uh, for you. So check that out on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, jumping from that, airlines closing that. Uh, gearing up for a busier and costlier holiday season. I would expect so. Uh, we're all aware that fuel prices have surged dramatically, but travelers have returned in droves, but higher costs are sopping up more of airline revenue. You could almost say that about every single sector in the market right now, folks, all right? Uh, we have rising revenue. I mean, the FANG stocks, almost all the retail stocks, revenue is not the problem right now, okay? Costs are the problem. And if you tie inflation to everything, it's like, Revenue is not a problem because companies are raising their prices. The problem is that they're raising their prices because they have to pay more for the people that are working in their stores. They have to pay more for the input costs of the goods that they're selling. They have to pay more for the real estate costs of their the uh, their stores. You know the the land, the real estate, the rental prices, all of that going up. Uh, and I imagine that's going to happen in airlines as well. Airlines. I mean, this is the one area that you could say still waiting 
to catch up from the COVID lows in terms of you check out American, right? We're sitting at 30 bucks, we're still at 20. Delta had been above where we were, uh, pretty close, didn't even quite make it actually. Delta made it up to 50 bucks, we came into COVID at about 60. The domestic airlines, that's who made it, JetBlue, yeah. JetBlue made it above the pre-COVID levels, but look at that, talk about getting ahead of itself. You're up to 21, you're back to 15, 29. We pull up Southwest real quick. Above where we were pre-market, we're back to 48 right now, and the cruise ships really have a ways to go right now. Down to 22 for Carnival, we're at 50, and Norwegian, pretty similar action at 26 right now, came into COVID at about 60. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis the tiger first mortgage program may be the program for you the best rate on a five-year cd in the country right now according to bankrate.com is paying one percent per year or one thousand dollars per one hundred thousand dollars invested the tiger first mortgage program pays seven percent per year paid monthly on secured high value buildable properties in saint petersburg florida the investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Right now, we got the S&Ps up about seven points. Market's sliding a little bit from the open right now, and we're going to jump to a little bit of uh, the China home market. The woes continuing. The headline out here from Bloomberg, China home sales, China home market woes deepen as prices, sales fall further. You never really quite know what's going on in China, folks. Uh, China's home slump deepened in October as declines in prices, sales, and property investments widening and in pressure on authorities to stabilize the market. Check this out. When you look at new home prices, fell again in October after the first drop in six years. China does not want drops, folks. If they are 
allowing drops. That means that they've lost control for sure. Because if they could control this market, the last thing they would be showing is drops in new home prices in October for the first time in six years. And those drops continuing. You had a 0.1% drop at the end of September. You now have a 0.3% drop at the end of October. Come on, select. there it is, the end of October. And you look at the trend. The trend is not your friend in this market, folks. Be careful. Uh, and we've heard the Evergrande, right, reverberating in terms of that market. The slowdown in the property sector is the key risk for the macro, uh, macro outlook in the next few quarters. That's uh, one chief economist uh, writing in Monday. Falling prices may dissuade home buyers concerned about the value of their assets, making it harder for developers to sell properties generate cash it can reverberate everywhere over in that market and their market could reverberate over here folks so be careful of that one keep your eye on that one um but china having some problems over there in a big way all right let's check out some of the commodities as we wrap things up right now we jump over to the crude contract uh all the talking crude right now in terms of supply are we going to push out some of our reserves nonetheless you got crude down at 79.74 we were up at 85 bucks earlier last week uh, quite the decline, but all things in context, folks, you take a look at crude on a daily, uh, you go back to 40 bucks a year ago, you're trading at 80 bucks, you were as recently as August at 61, so you're still up 33%, folks, in less than three months, and you talk about a healthy pullback, you can make it down to 76 bucks, and you're still dealing with a 382 is all you're back to for the run we had starting in August. Thanks so much, folks. Don't forget about Larry's webinar Wednesday. Check it out on the front page of TFNN. Our man Basil Chapman, he's up live next. Larry at 11, live programming all day, folks.